Hey everybody! In this video we're going to be learning about non-homogeneous equations and we're going to talk about the method of undetermined coefficients as a way to find a particular solution. So to find a solution to a non-homogeneous linear equation with constant coefficients, so notice we have our second order differential equation. So we have our ay double prime plus by prime plus cy. This time it equals something like f of t, whereas in um, previously we had this equal to zero, and that was a homogeneous equation. So we call f of t the non-homogeneity term, and it's a single term of a special type. And so when this is the case, we use a technique called the method of undetermined coefficients to solve this type of equation. Um, just a quick note that this method is only going to work for um, non-homogeneities that look like polynomials, exponentials, sines and cosines, or products of these. This statement here is uh, sort of a default one for our situation. Pretty much everything we're going to see in our class is going to fall into this category. But what I want you to be aware of is that we're finding a particular solution. So there's lots of solutions, but we're just finding a particular one for each of our examples. So here's our method. So let me break this down for you. And then we're actually going to go through quite a few examples. So there's two situations here. So to find a particular solution of our differential equation, notice in both of these situations, we have our second order differential equation. But what it equals is what matters. So our non-homogeneity over here, this is f of t. So if what it equals has this format, where we have some constant times t to a power times e to the rt power, if that's what the non-homogeneity looks like, then what we do is we have this form of our solution. We use this form of our solution, and then depending on the roots, of our auxiliary equation, our characteristic equation. We're going to set s, which is right here. Notice it's the power on t. We're going to set it equal to 0, 1, or 2. Don't worry, we're going to go through examples of all these. And then down here, if what your second order differential equation equals has this format, where it still has t to a power, e to a power, but then it has either a cosine or a sine with it, then we use this form of the answer. So notice we have two versions of our solutions. Here's version one, that's our solution, where we're gonna end up filling in S, M, and R. And then version two down here, where we'll fill in S, M, alpha, and beta. And so in this one down here, um, S is either zero or one, depending on if our uh, alpha plus i beta is a root of our auxiliary equation or not. Okay, so you're going to reference back to this method and and our possible cases. Notice we have five cases um, by after you look at each example. So you're going to look at your example, see what it equals, what your equation equals, and then figure out which case you have one, two, three, four, or five. Okay, so we're going to try these six examples first. And why I group these together is because notice they all are associated with the same auxiliary equation. The auxiliary equation for each of these six is r squared plus 2r minus 3. So we're going to start by finding the roots of that equation. This one factors very nicely. And we get that the roots are negative 3 and positive 1. Okay. So then let's go right into example 1. We have to notice a few things, and then we decide which case we have. So notice that our non-homogeneity, f of t, what our equation equals, is of this format, 7 cosine 3t, which looks like this form over here, t to a power, a constant, e to a power, and cosine of something. So it doesn't have to have everything visible, and you'll see what I mean when I find out what m and alpha and beta are, but it still has this format. You have um, cosine is sort of the giveaway because there's a cosine right here. Okay, so the roots associated with this term are r equals alpha plus or minus i beta, and this is because of our previous slide. So based on what we saw, it was cases four and five where the roots associated with this type of non-homogeneity were alpha plus i beta. 
So going back to cases four and five, that's where I got this from. And now compare this to our auxiliary equation roots. And notice that those roots, negative three and one, are not complex. And so the roots associated with f of t right here don't match the roots associated with our auxiliary equation. And because of that, we have case four. Okay. So if you go back to your five cases, we have roots associated with our non-homogeneity f of t right here. Our roots of our auxiliary equation are here. And because these do not match, that's why we have case four. Case four said that our solution has this format. And then s is zero for case four. Okay, so you have to notice some things. And it, for us, it was these three items. And then that's how you decide your case. Once you have your case, you're, it's just really a matter of plugging in. So let's identify C, M, alpha, and beta. So just match up what your equation equals, f of t, with the format of f of t. And so notice what we have. We have that C is 7. There's no t to a power term here. So that, that's why m is 0, because it's technically t to the 0 invisible right here. Alpha is also 0, because notice there's no e to a power here. It's invisible. So it's like e to the 0 power. And then beta is obviously 3 because it's cosine 3t. All right, and now that we know all of our values of our variable or our letters here, we just plug in. So s right here is 0 because we're doing case 4. And then we plug in m is 0, alpha is 0, and beta is 3. So right here, s is 0, m is 0, alpha is 0, beta is 3. I just plugged in right into this equation. And because, real quick, m is 0, we're only using this last term of what's in the parentheses here. So technically, it could be the first term, but you sort of count down. And we'll do examples where it's, m is bigger than 0, so you can see what I mean. But that's why we just have a sub 0 right here. And then simplify your answer. And this is one of our solutions to this equation up here. And notice you're going to have a's and b's in your answers for all of these. They're going to remain there. OK, number two, we have a new non-homogeneity term, but our auxiliary equation was the same. Therefore, the roots were the same. And so let's notice our things, that the f of t is of the form c t to the m e to the alpha t sine beta t. So again, we're looking at cases 4 and 5 because of what f of t looks like, the format of f of t. And on this one, sine's kind of the giveaway that it's this form. Okay. And then we look at our auxiliary equation roots, and we see if they match. And it's very similar to the last example. No, they do not match. Negative 3 and 1 are not complex, like this format would be up here. And so we have case 4 again. This is the format of our solution. S is still 0. So identify C is 2. In this case, M is 1, because notice it's T to the invisible 1 power. So that's why M is 1. Alpha is 1, because it's E to the invisible 1 times T. And then this one, beta is also an invisible one, sine of beta t. And then we just plug into our solution here. Plug in all your values. And so what I want to just make sure you see is that m is 1. So we have this term and then the one after it. Okay. So the way this works here in the parentheses is whatever m is, you, you have that term, a sub m times t to the m. And then you just keep decreasing until you get to 0. So because m is 1, we start with a sub 1 times t to the 1, and then plus a sub 0. Okay? And then everywhere I have an alpha, I put a 1. Everywhere I have a beta, I put a 1. Everywhere there's an s, put a 0. And then just simplify your answer. So this is our solution right down here. Just kind of cleaned up a little bit. All right, let's try another one. So very, very similar. Our process is the same. Our non-homogeneity, f of t, has the format again that we've seen before with the cosine in it. And our roots of our auxiliary equation do not match 
the roots associated with this non-homogeneity term. So we are in case four one more time and identifying C, M, alpha, and beta, okay? And then plugging into our solution. So on this one, let me just make sure you understand what's happening with M. Because the power on T is two, M is two. So we go here and we say A sub two times T to the second power. And we decrease by one. So that's why it's A sub two T squared plus A sub one T to the one plus A sub zero. Okay, because that's because M was two. And then everywhere there was an alpha put a zero because there's no e to a power here, so the invisible um, one, e to the zero, which is one, and then everywhere there's a beta put a pi. Okay, and then just clean that up a little bit, and this is our solution right down here. So this is really a matter of identifying which case you have and then plugging in. All right, let's do this one. All right, this one's a little different. We're now in cases one, two, or three because the form of our non-homogeneity term. So notice this doesn't have a cosine or a sine. That's sort of the giveaway why we're in cases one, two, or three. And so the format of f of t looks like this. And now the root associated with this term is negative three. Let me just make sure you see why. So our non-homogeneous term right here is five t to the zero, because there's no t right there, e to the rt. So r is negative three if you just match these up. So that's where I got r equals negative 3 from. I just matched what I had here with the format here. And now I compare this to the roots of my auxiliary equation. And because the roots of the auxiliary equation had the same number here, negative 3 was the root for this non-homogeneous term, and then negative 3 was a root for our auxiliary equation, because it matches, that's why we're going to pick case 2 this time. So we notice these things, and because one of the roots of our auxiliary equation matches the root of our non-homogeneity, that's case two. Those things together give us case two. And so case two says that the solution has this format where S is one, okay? Solution of this form, case two, S is one. So identify C, M, and R this time. And then we just have C is 5, M is 0, R is negative 3, and plug into our solution. So notice S is 1 from right here, A sub 0 because M is 0, and then E to the negative 3T because R is negative 3. And we just make that look a little bit better, and there's our final solution. Okay, one, uh, another one like this. Okay, so notice the format of our non-homogeneity very similar to the last one. The root associated with this term is one, because notice there's an invisible one next to the t right here. This is e to the one t, so that's why r is one. And then we compare this to the roots of our auxiliary equation, and because one of them matches, the root here associated with our non-homogeneity matches one of the roots of our auxiliary equation. That's case two again. Okay, so format of our answer, S is one, because we're in case two. Then we have M is one, R is also one, and we plug into our solution, and then just simplify, and here's our final answer. All right, one more like this. So we have our non-homogeneity is of this form. R in this case is one, invisible one right here, and that matches one of our auxiliary roots. And so we have case two one more time identifying that m is 2, r is 1, and so notice the format of our answer where m is 2 right here, and then we decrease to m is 1, and m is 0, and then we have our final version of our answer right here. Okay, so let's keep going. Let's do three more examples where we have the same auxiliary equation for the 3. So our auxiliary equation in this case is r squared minus 2r plus 1. And so if we solve this, we're going to get r equals 1, but as a repeated root. Okay, so I want to show you this one because it, it does change um, what our cases are going to be, or what cases we're going to choose, the fact that this is a repeated root. 
Okay, so we have number seven here. Our non-homogeneity is of this form. The root associated with this term is negative three from right here. And then if we compare this to our auxiliary root, it does not match, okay? So that is case one. So we're in case one because this root doesn't match this root and we have this format. And then case one says our answers look like this, but S is zero. So then if we identify that M is zero, R is negative three, and we plug all our values in to our solution here and simplify, we get this solution, Y equals AE to the negative three T. Okay, number eight here, we have our non-homogeneity of this form. The root associated with this is one, and then this does match our auxiliary equation root. But we have to do a little bit more than just say that it matches. We also have to remember that it's a double root. So because it was a repeated root of our auxiliary equation, that leads to case three. If it was a single root, that would have been case two. But because this is a repeated root and these match, that's case three. And so case three, the format of our answer is here, but S is two for case three. And then we plug in, once we find M is one, R is one, into the format of our answer. And our final answer is here, okay? So the main thing here is noticing which case we're gonna have. And that's why it's important if you get a repeated root to make note of it, because it does change which case you pick. And then number nine here. So we have our format of our non-homogeneity. The root here is one, the visible one right there. Again, that matches with our root of our not, um, auxiliary equation, and it was a double root, and so we have case three again. Okay, so finding that M is two, R is one, and plugging into our format of our answer, we have the following. So really similar to the last one, just this one's just different because M was two. All right, one more. So. This one here, the auxiliary equation is r squared minus 2r plus 2. So let's solve this one. This one does not factor nicely. So we're going to use our quadratic formula and simplify. And notice that we have a negative square root. So this is going to be a complex number. So our roots associated with the, this auxiliary equation are complex. So this is the first time we got this. So then we keep those in mind. And then we notice some things. Our non-homogeneity, notice it has a cosine in it, so it's of this format. So we're automatically in cases four or five. We just have to decide which one. So the roots associated with this term right here are complex. We have that written um, at the, one of our first things we looked at out of our five cases. The roots of our auxiliary equation are also complex. So now that we not notice that, then we have to do a little bit more and say, do these match? Okay, so earlier, we didn't even have complex roots, so we didn't have to say, did they match? They just automatically did not match. But now we have to take a moment and see if they do match. So identify alpha and beta. So our non-homogeneity equals this general term here. So lining things up, notice that the coefficient, um, or the power on E is 1t, so notice alpha is one, and then cosine is, the argument of it is one t, so beta is also one. Okay, so just matching, you get alpha and beta are both one, matching them with this. And so the roots associated with this term are alpha plus i beta, from right here, and we plug in alpha is one, beta is one, and we get one plus or minus i. And that's exactly what our roots from our auxiliary equation were, one plus or minus i. So they match, the roots match, which is case five. If they did not match, it would be case four, like we did earlier. So case five has this format of our solution, and S is one for case five. So we identify that M is one. We already figured out alpha and beta were one. And then we plug in, 
plugging in also that S is 1 into the format of our solution. And then we just clean it up a little. And this is our final answer. Okay, so that's it for this one. This method of undetermined coefficients, just keep in mind the five cases and then do your first few steps of noticing what's going on so that you can identify which case you have. Once you know what case you have, it's really just a matter of plugging in values and then that's your answer. All right, thanks for watching.